Okay, so welcome to College Algebra. How's everyone today? Good? Oh, <laughs> attendance is better when there's a homework due. That's why I try to make a homework due every time. Okay, so any questions before we, before we get to it? Okay, so last time, this is a, a summary of what we did. So I could draw a picture. And then do something like the following. So some nice, uh, nice function here. I could start asking you questions about this picture. I could say, okay, uh, as x goes to negative infinity blank, and as x goes to positive infinity blank. So how do you answer these? Mm -hmm. Eventually happens to what? To y. to y, right? So as x goes to negative infinity, that is to say, as you go to the left, then eventually what does y do? Y goes down to negative infinity. Okay. How about as x goes to positive infinity? Y goes to positive infinity. Okay. Another question that another question that could be asked is how about what is the degree parity? It must be odd. Why must it be odd? Because they're opposite. So either looking at the picture, you can ignore the wiggle in the middle. Either looking at the picture, notice that one side is up and the other side is down. So the behavior left and right is opposite. So it must be odd. Alternatively, <coughs> ignoring the picture and just looking at this, these are opposite behaviors. So the oppositeness, lets you conclude that this is odd. OK. Another question that can be asked is what is the leading coefficient sign? Must be positive. Why must the leading coefficient sign be positive? Because as x goes to positive infinity, so does y. Correct. So it's the behavior of the right branch. So the right branch is going up. That's positive. So it's just, just the branch on the right that matters. So this, this alone. OK. Another thing I could say is, OK, I want you to count the zeros. So specifically, I want, you to, I want you to label every zero with a Z. So what does it mean, a zero? An x-intercept. And it is referred to as a zero. It's referred to as a zero because those are the inputs to the function so that the function will output zero. So it's called a zero. So for example, if this is five, if that is x value 5, then 5 is said to be a 0 because if you input 5, the function outputs 0. So here's a 0, here's a 0, 
here's a zero. Three zeros. Any question about finding the zeros? Now we had a further reckoning about the number of zeros. The number of zeros also tells you something about the minimum conceivable degree. What's the minimum possible degree for this function as a result of counting three zeros? It must be three, at least. So remember, there was two countings. One of them was plus one, and the other was same as. Okay, there's two countings. So, so one of the things that we counted was zeros, and the other thing we counted was, was what? Turning points. You can remember it that zeros is the same because you add zero to the number of zeros. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I'd never heard that before. <laughs> so zeros is the same. Th so, so we counted three zeros, so the minimum, de minimum degree is also three because you're going to add zero. I like that. That's nice. Okay. Uh, turning points. Could someone in plain language say what a turning point is? Okay, when the slope changes from positive to negative. Okay, I like that. Alternatively, the top of a hill or the bottom of a valley. Okay, so let's, let's label all the turning points. So here's a turning point. So I'm going to label it with a T. And notice, this is interesting, this is a zero. That is also a turning point. It's both. So I'd like for you to observe that here is a zero that is not a turning point. Here is a turning point that is not a zero. And here is a point that is both a zero and turning. So any, any combination is possible. So here's a turning point. Here's a turning point. Here's a turning point. And that's a turning point. So how many turning points were there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, <coughs> then the last kind of question that we asked last time is that as a result of all these considerations, please tell me what the minimum degree of this is. Seven. seven. It must be at least degree seven. So the reason is because according to the number of, number of zeros, that means that according to the number of zeros, that means it's at, at least degree 3. And according to the number of turning points, that means it, it, it is at least degree 6 plus 1, which is 7. So if it is at least degree 3 and also at least degree 7, then it's at least degree 7. So could it be degree 8? No. Oh, no, 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 no. It cannot be degree 8. But 8's bigger than 7. Uh, but the degree parity is odd. Ah, but the degree parity is odd. So if it's not degree 7, then what might we check next? Nine. We might check 9. No sense in checking 8. Couldn't possibly be 8. Be eight. And no, I don't expect you to be able to tell the difference between 7 and 9. It, it's not possible according to the information that you have. So any question about, about this? Okay. <coughs> so now how about f of x is, in fact, I'm going to say, I'm going to say that this is this is hidden from view. So you can't you can't see it. Okay, so then uh, negative 2 multiplied by x uh, plus 2 multiplied by x squared is negative 2 multiplied by x cubed plus 2x squared, which is negative 2x cubed. 
uh, minus 4x squared. Okay, so you can't see that. And then I give you this function. f of x is negative 2x cubed minus 4x squared. And my first request of you is please construct a sign chart. for f. <laughs> because constructing a sign chart, that's what was missing from your life, <laughs> right? <laughs> so what's the first step in the construction of, of such a chart? Find the natural domain. Find the natural domain. <laughs> such joy. Okay, so natural doma domain. So what is the natural domain of F? All reals. All reals. So can someone put, put that into plain language? Why, why is it that it's all reals? Because there's nothing that it can't be. Right. So the question is asking, just because the domain is not explicitly specified, that means the domain is the natural domain. So just what x's could you plug in there? What could possibly go wrong? Nothing. Because there's no divisions by x, so we don't have to worry about dividing by 0. There's no radicals. There's no even radicals, so we don't have to worry about negative arguments to even radicals. So nothing could go wrong. Okay, what's the next step in the construction of a sign chart? This is the simplify step. Right. So you normally simply simplify has an L in it. When when we're solving inequalities, that's where the zero comes in. But but this is not an inequality, it's a function, so everything is already on one side. So all that we really need to do is simplify this, and this is in this case, by factoring. So f of x, so does f of x factor? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so have a look at this. What's common? Negative 2, negative 2 and also x squared. OK, so if we were to factor that out, so I'll factor out the negative 2. If I factor out negative 2, then I get x cubed plus 2 uh, x squared and then oh yes I see x squared is also common <coughs> so we'll factor out that uh, so I'll get negative 2 x plus 2 multiplied by x squared ha 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 right <laughs> So this, this particular step on Friday and Monday will, be, will become more interesting. So I gave you a, particularly, a one that's particularly easy to factor. Okay. But on Friday and Monday, we're going to start dealing with polynomials that require some work. Okay. Uh, so we simplified it. What's the next step in sign chart? Yes, now we solve solve for the zeros. Which is to say, we want to solve f of x is equal to 0. So we want to solve the equation negative 2 multiplied by x plus 2 multiplied by x squared is 0. Well, now that we did all the hard work of factoring it, solving it is fairly straightforward. What are the zeros? Very good. So is negative 2 a 0 because of that negative 2 right there? 
Uh, it's because of this, right? So notice this factor. If you were to plug in negative 2, that factor would be 0. And it would not matter what the other ones are. OK. <clears throat> um, so now, what's the next step? Yeah, now make the actual chart. So the sign, making a sign chart is, is you're going to take the real line, and you're going to carve it up into pieces, cutting it at breaks in the natural domain and also where? At the zeros. Now, there were no breaks in the natural domain. There were only zeros. So how many fence posts do we have? Two. We have two fence posts, two cut points. One of them is here, and the other here. <coughs> so now what? OK, right, in each region. So how about negative 3 for this one, and um, negative 1 for this one, and 1 for this one. So plug them into what? into the simplified one, right? So we're going to plug these in to that one. <coughs> OK. So this has three factors, that one, that one, and that one. And I'm going to plug in, I'm going to check each one of those three factors, that one, that one, and that one, for sign at each one of the evaluation points. So negative 2 is negative all the time. Uh, if I plug in negative 3, so negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1. And then if I plug in negative 3 there, that would be negative, And we're going to square that. Okay. So any question about the signs in the left region? Okay, in the middle region, negative 2 is negative. If you plug in negative 1, negative 1 plus 2 is positive. <coughs> and if you plug in negative 1, that would be negative, and we will square that. So is there any question about coming up with these sign patterns? This is all OK? OK, now if we plug in 1, negative 2 will be negative. Plug in 1 here, that would be positive. Plug in 1 in there, that would be positive, And we're going to square that. OK. So now that allows us to answer, to, to figure out the overall SIGN in each region. So in the leftmost region, what's the overall SIGN? positive, right? Because this is negative times negative, that, so that's positive, and then negative squared, that's positive. So the overall SIGN is positive in the left region. Okay, how about um, in the middle region? Negative. And in the right region? Negative. Okay. Any question about this? <coughs> OK. Now, continuing up here. So this is question. So continuing on the same trajectory here, question two. So question one was make the chart. Question two is, now I want you to answer a bunch of questions about F. Uh, <laughs> As x goes to the left, blank. As x goes to the right, blank. The degree parity, blank. The leading coefficient sine, blank. OK. So what do you think? 
as x goes to the left? Positive. Okay. How do you conclude that? Right. Well, have a look at the chart. Have a look at the chart. The leftmost region of the chart is positive. It's positive. And because this because this is a a cubic polynomial, we know that it looks like like this, <laughs> one arm up and one down or the other way, right? Because it's because it's a cubic. Okay. So the leftmost region is positive, so that mean that means that as you go to the left, y has to go up. Okay. How about as you go to the right? Negative infinity. Okay, how about the degree parity? It's odd. So please give me two totally different reasons why it's odd. So look at, so these are opposite, so it must be odd. These are opposite. So it must be odd. It's degree 3, <laughs> which is odd. He says, everyone see that all of these are in agreement with each other. Okay, how about the leading coefficient sign? Must be negative. Why is it negative? The rightmost region is negative. The rightmost region is negative. Alternatively, <laughs> what is the leading coefficient? Negative, negative 2, <laughs> which is negative. OK, so any question about, about coming up with these? OK. Now I want you to sketch what's going on. So we know exactly where two points are. Which points do we know exactly where they are? That one and that one, right? We know that that is a zero, and we know that that is a zero. So here's a zero, and here's a zero. So it has to go through those points. It has to go through them. And because it's odd, because it's odd, we know that the behavior is opposite. So it's either going to start high and end low or start low and end high. It has to be one of those. And furthermore, we know exactly which one it is. Which one is it? It has to start high and end low because, because either looking at this, as you go to the right, you go down, or because the leading coefficient is negative, you know that this is where you have to end. You have to end down in this, in this quadrant. And because it has odd parity, we know that means that we have to start up here. So we need to start high and end low. And we need to do these two, these two zeros. Now there's two different ways to do that. There's two ways to do it. You could, you could uh, cross this one and bounce off of that one. That's possible. What's another possibility? Yeah, you could bounce off the first one and cross the second one. Now, which one is going to be right? Why is the first one going to be right? Ah, the sign chart, right? The sign chart is telling you what's going to happen. So let's look here. This is saying that you must be positive and then negative across this zero. Positive and then negative. So the fact that it is switching, the fact that these are different,
this means that that is a crossing. Okay, you must, you must cross the axis from the positive side to the negative side. Similarly, these are the same. And therefore, this is a bounce. Which is to say, you're going to go up to that zero and then sort of just bounce off of it, deflect off of it. <clears throat> so we must cross and then bounce. And so do you see how that's in agreement with the sign chart? We're above, below, below. Above, below, below. Cross, bounce. Cross, bounce. Any question about this exercise? OK. <coughs> so. Uh, another matter we need to deal with is, is what? Okay. So definition. This is the definition of zero multiplicity. Multiplicity. So suppose that polynomial F has x minus c to k as part of its factorization. OK, so to give you an example of what I mean is we could take that polynomial from the previous exercise, negative 2 multiplied by x plus 2, and then uh, x squared. So that would, what I'm talking about is that this, this c here would be negative 2. Why negative 2? Right, because it has to be subtraction. And then what would k be? One. One. Because there's an implied one there. Alternatively, what is c for this one? Zero. And what is k for this one? Two. So suppose a polynomial f has that as part of its factorization. Then, two things. One, x equal to c is a 0 of f. And two, x equal to c is said to have multiplicity So for example, I could give you p of x is negative uh, 5 multiplied by x plus 4 squared multiplied by x minus 1 
uh, cubed multiplied by x. What I want you to do is I want you to make a table for me that lists out all the zeros with their multiplicity. Okay. So what's one of the zeros? Negative four. Negative four is a zero. So I thought I heard someone say four. Maybe not, but, but I'll, I'll at least go with that. Why is four not a zero? Right, so the, I suspect if you thought four was a zero, you thought it was because of this. Well, what would this be if you plugged in four? It'd be eight, not zero. What do you need to plug in to this factor so that it would be zero? Negative four. Okay, so negative four is a zero. What is the multiplicity of, of negative four? It has multiplicity two. What's another zero? One is another zero. What is its multiplicity? Three. What's another zero? Zero. What is its multiplicity? One. How about this negative five? Is it a zero? No. <laughs> What could you plug into negative 5 so that negative 5 would be equal to 0? <laughs> no, nothing, right? <laughs> okay, so now if you, if you compute the total multiplicity, what's the total multiplicity? It, that is to say you sum these all up. 6. That is the degree. So the degree of a polynomial has to be sum of the, the, the sum of the multiplicities of its zeros. Okay. So any question about? How did you get the multiplicity? So in the first place, for this factor, do you agree that negative 4 is a 0? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the multiplicity is the exponent. Alternatively, I could write this like this. I could say that this is negative 5 multiplied by x plus 4 multiplied by x plus 4 multiplied by x plus 4 multipl uh, No, there's just two of them. 2x plus 4s and then x minus 1, x minus 1, x minus 1, and then x. And my question to you is, is how many times did I need to write x plus 4? Okay. Twice. Mm -hmm. That's its multiplicity. Okay. And here I wrote x, x minus 1. How many times did I need to write it? Three, Three times. That's its multiplicity. Okay. Other questions? Okay. So then I could give you a polynomial at, at this point, right? Could, I could give you a polynomial uh, that's factored, and I could say, tell me its zeros and their multiplicities, and you should just be able to just rattle it off. Uh, on Friday and Monday, I'll give you a polynomial that is not factored. So, so this, this, this question is easy because it's already factored, but what if I multiplied it out and collected like terms? Ah, then finding the zeros is like going on a seek and find, right? <laughs> let's, let's find it. Where are the zeros? And then we we'll count them. Very enjoyable. Okay, so, so another matter 
that we need to consider about multiplicity. This is the significance of multiplicity. So, in particular, we're just going to deal with the parity of multiplicity. That is to say, when the multiplicity is even or odd. So, near a zero of odd multiplicity, then the sign chart will look like this. So we're going to cut out a piece of the sign chart. So we're not looking at all of the sign chart. We're just looking at part of it. So these, these are my cut lines. So who knows what's happening elsewhere. But if it's, a, if it's an odd multiplicity, if it, has, if it has odd multiplicity, it must be the case that it switches sign from negative to positive or from positive to negative. That's, that's what must occur. When you look at the plot, when you look at the plot instead, then what happens is, as you're looking at this zero here, and I've cut away everything except the part of the function that's close to that zero, then this must be a cross. So you must cross. Interesting. So what do you think will happen near a zero of even multiplicity? So what do you think will be the effect on the sign chart? How about on the sign chart, though? No change, right? It'll have a repetition. It'll say positive and then positive some more. Or negative and negative some more. So I made that one positive, so both positive, because <laughs> I'm writing in pen. <laughs> OK, so these are the same. OK, and then for the, 
for the plot. What we'll observe. that it will bounce off of this one. So instead of, instead of crossing, it'll do some kind of bounce. Interesting. So notably, notably, I'd like for you to observe that if you cut away just that much and you look at that, that looks like a quadratic, doesn't it? And what is, what is the degree of a quadratic? Even. Even. And how about that? If you, if you look at it really close, that looks like a line. And how about the degree parity of a line? Odd. Okay, so let's take a look at a picture. So what if I was to give you this picture? So, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and draw a polynomial that has all the different features. That, that we know how to keep track of now. Now I can ask lots of questions. So supposing, uh, I don't even need to give it a name, so I'll just say uh, as x goes to negative infinity, blank. As y goes to negative infinity, uh, po what am I saying? As x goes to positive infinity, blank. The degree parity, blank. The leading coefficient sign, blank. The number of zeros, and I want you to mark every zero with the letter Z so that I know that you know that it's a zero. And the number of turning points. And then for each zero, I want you to not only mark it with a Z, but I want you to mark it with a Z. And I want you to mark it with an E or an O corresponding to whether or not its multiplicity is even or odd. And please tell me the minimum degree. Okay, so as x goes to negative infinity, y goes to positive infinity. Okay, as x goes to positive infinity, 
y goes to positive infinity. Okay, the degree parity must be even. And how do you know that the degree parity is even? It's not because the right side is positive. That's not enough. Because they're the same, right? Because because if this if the right side was positive and I pulled this branch down, it would be be odd. Okay. How about the leading coefficient sine? Must be positive. How do you know it's positive? Right side's going up. So now let's label all the zeros and label them as being even or odd. So here's a zero. So that's a zero. And is it odd or even? Odd. It's odd. Why is it odd? Because it, it crosses. Here's a zero. So that's a zero. Is it even or odd? Even. It's even because it bounces. How about this one? Odd. How about this one? Even. <coughs> okay, and then label the turning points with T's. So let's label so we were supposed to count that. So how many zeros are there? Four. Now let's label the turning points. <coughs> so can someone explain to me in plain language what a turning point is? So that's a zero. When it, when it slope changes from negative yes. to positive. Okay, I like that. So here's a turning point. It's a turning point. Uh, that's a turning point also, so that's interesting. All even zeros are turning points. Uh, is this a turning point? <coughs> Why not? Ah, it's an odd zero. <coughs> turning point, turning point, turning point. Turning point. So how many were there? One, two, three, four, five, six. Wait, one, two. Oh, here I missed one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what's the minimum degree of this? Eight. Interesting. Okay. Have a nice Wednesday.